It, uh, oh no. Three weeks till Dragon Steel, or like two and a half, really. If you didn't get a ticket, there's still lots of ways you can participate. The actual release party will be streamed via Brandon's YouTube channel, and lots of the vendors will be running deals during the con, including Dragon Wood Shop. If you manage to snag a ticket, or if you're coming to the open to the public portion of the convention, I've got some even better news for you later in the video. Before that, thank you to Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, Meathy, Corone, Gallant, Aegis, the son of James, Lexar, and Talap, and 42. Chapter 31. We get the moment when Shallan sees this. Radiant has to take over because it's so beautiful. Teft's original squires, including Isaseek, not the cartographer, are wearing red armbands. Moash has it coming. The new Eurythiru uniforms are white with gold trim, which are exactly the colors Odium wore in Dalinar's visions, so that's a, a choice. Mraze and Ayatil are nowhere to be seen, says a guard with a faint Bavland accent. Same with Renarin and Relaine Spren. It seems Gliss and Toomey are almost Atium shadows, a red afterimage in reverse. They don't appear in Shadesmar because they're within their radiance? More attuned to the spiritual realm indeed. Relaine is confused about all the different secret societies. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Curious how people's decisions are an individual matter when they're confronted about them, but those decisions form blatant patterns. Louder for the people in the back, Relaine! They can see Dalinar and Navani through the tower, who are heading down to the ground floor for their spiritual realm test run. Gavinor is still, understandably, scared of Spren. Poor kid and therefore is scared of the tower. Navani proves the goodness of the sibling through the existence of giant laundry facilities, and then extrapolates that to how we know God loves us. Says it would be proud. I know it probably doesn't matter, but what did Wit say? He's got a rock from Ashen, and then drops a significant historical tidbit. They were fragments of a holy site on your homeworld, but stones themselves took on a kind of mystical lore by association. Some 7,000 years later, everyone in Shinovar worships rocks, and has no idea why. Navani is appropriately upset that Wit hasn't shared this information with anyone, or even written it down. I keep meaning to. Hoyd was there during the migration to Roshar. That sounds like it would be an interesting novella, in case Brandon needs any more ideas. They're going to use the rock to connect themselves to that specific event, which Wit can authenticate. This gets very realmatic and crazy. Dalinar and Navani both connect themselves to the present time and place. Bondsmiths. Wit talks about his experience using perpendicularities in shard pools, and he's been to the spiritual realm that way before. There are few paths in this universe I fear to walk. This is one of them. Shallan and company fly through Shadesmar Urethiru, which is surprisingly solid. Shallan's ultimate goal as a scientist is to create, basically, a Roshar encyclopedia. I wonder how much of the world guide for the Cosmere RPG is going to be from her. Renarin is incredibly overstimulated by all the spren, all the everywhere, some of which I definitely don't recognize. Shallan, predictably, loves it. She confirms to him about Ba Adomishram and tells him about bonding to spren. She's hoping he can guide her through the spiritual realm to find Mishram's prison before the ghost bloods. He's very overstimulated, and Gliss is able to help, darkening his peripheral vision to decrease sensory input. We saw something similar with Adolin's shard plate during the Battle of Narek with the lightning. Is this possible because Renarin Spren is inside of him? He sees Dalinar, Navani, and Wit, shimmering with a great number of odd colors, and two more souls hiding in an air duct, Lift and someone else. They're looking for three people, two tall and one short, just like the guards they brought with them and posted outside. <sighs> Chapter 32. Poof! In go Dalinar and Navani. Bam! In burst Mraze, Ayatel, and Lika. Seems like Mraze has a Racium anti-light dagger, and is probably bonded to an enlightened cryptic. Ayatil seems more like the else caller type to me. Isaseek, the not cartographer, gets his throat slashed by Ayatil. Hopefully that perpendicularity opening right then will give him enough stormlight to be okay, or else Renarin or Relaine will have work to do. She jumps for Shallan and Radiant manifests fully armored, grabs her from the air, and slams her to the ground. This is where we really see the difference between Mraze and Ayatil. The moment trouble starts, Mraze whips his dagger out. Ayatil keeps it hidden until the last moment. Shallan manages to disarm her, though 
taking a blow dart in the eye in the process. Radiant dispatches Lika, and Mraze gets stuck to the ceiling. However, he's still got his anti-light dagger, and he throws it into the perpendicularity, severing Dalinar and Navani's ties to the physical realm. Yeah. Uh-oh. The Bondsmiths have left the building, but if you're going to be in the Salt Palace for Dragonsteel Nexus, Dragon Woodshop has special deals just for you! While everyone can take advantage of Dragon Discount Days running December 4th through 8th, if you order online and show your receipt at the Dragon Woodshop booth, you'll get to pick free rewards based on your purchase total, starting at the free shipping threshold of $75. I think actually she changed it to $45. $45. Stop by the booth before you order to check out the rewards, and save even more by using the coupon code SHAFO for an additional 5% off your purchase! Check out all the awesome stuff here! Preview chapters are coming to a close, so if you've missed any, watch my previous reaction videos here. Otherwise, get ready to read and find out!